In this video, we will be discussing payback period as a method of capital budgeting. Remember that capital budgeting is the process of evaluating potential fixed asset investments to decide which ones to accept and which to decline. An investment's payback period is simply the expected amount of time it will take to recover the cost of the initial investment. Managers typically prefer investments that pay for themselves quickly, meaning a shorter payback period is preferred. Let's consider the simple case when an investment provides the same cash flow each year. Let's assume that a company is considering purchasing a new piece of equipment. The price of the new equipment is $100,000 and is expected to bring the company $25,000 in annual net cash flow. Since the cash flow is a consistent $25,000 per year, we can calculate the payback period using the formula payback period is equal to the cost of the initial investment divided by the annual net cash flows. For our example, we have $100,000 divided by $25,000, which equals 4 years. It will take 4 years for the cash flows to pay back the initial investment. Other investments with shorter payback periods, say 2 or 3 years, are generally more desirable than one like ours with a payback period of 4 years. Now, sometimes the cash flows change from year to year. Let's consider a similar example with a $100,000 investment, but instead of $25,000 in cash flow per year, we have the following schedule of cash flows. We need to calculate the cumulative net cash flows, which is really just the total cash flow up to the specified year. So in year zero, when the investment is purchased, the company has a negative $100,000 net cash flow and cumulative net cash flow. After the first year, they have earned $20,000 through the use of the asset that they purchased, bringing the cumulative net cash flows to negative $80,000, bound by taking the negative $100,000 and adding $20,000. Continuing with the same process, the year two cumulative net cash flows are negative $50,000, bound by taking the negative $80,000 and adding $30,000. Then, following the same process, we have negative $10,000, positive 10,000, and positive 25,000 for the final three years. The payback period is the year in which the cumulative net cash flows change from negative to positive. We see here that after year three, the cumulative net cash flows are still negative, but after year four, the cumulative net cash flows are positive. This tells us that the payback period, the switch from negative to positive, happens somewhere between years three and four. If we assume the $20,000 in cash flow was earned equally throughout the year, which is usually a reasonable assumption, we can find the payback period by taking the year when the sign switches, year 3, and adding the cumulative net cash flows before the fourth year as a positive number, 10,000, divided by the expected cash flows in the year, 20,000. When we simplify, we get 3.5, so the payback period is three and a half years. All right, now that we have talked about how to calculate the payback period, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using it. On the advantage side, we have the simplicity of calculation, especially when there are even cash flows. Even with uneven cash flows, it isn't too difficult to find the payback period. Another advantage is that the payback period is very easy to understand. It's easy to explain to a manager or another employee that an investment will pay for itself in X number of years, even for someone without a background in finance or accounting. As for disadvantages, I'll just have you know that much of the finance community tends to frown upon the payback period method for a variety of reasons. The first disadvantage is that all cash flows after the payback period are completely ignored. Two investments that both pay for themselves in three years might have radically different cash flows after three years, and the payback period method completely ignores this difference. The second disadvantage, which is a big one, is that the payback period completely ignores the time value of money. For example, as long as the cash flow happens before the payback period, a $50,000 cash flow earned today is treated identical to a $50,000 cash flow earned in five years in the payback period calculation. But, of course, we know $50,000 earned today is much more value than $50,000 in five years, because that's five years where the $50,000 could be invested into other projects or investments that presumably earn some amount of return. All right, that wraps up our video on the payback period. Join us in the next video where we will discuss the next capital budgeting method, net present value.